Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to one and all. Hey, listen, real quick, before we get started, again, we don't have children's church today. We're going to have the family together, but if you do need to use the nursery, uh, it's only for kids, not adults, okay? Anyway, if you do use, use the nursery, it's over there <laughs> on, the, on the other side if, if you need to change the baby or anything like that, that will be available. But we just want to spend time together as a family uh, uh, for Christmas, so let's just go before the Lord and, and thank Him for this day. Father, we thank you. We, we, we thank you for this day that you made, Father, the day that you sent Christ Jesus into the world. And we say Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just dedicate this day to you and help us to always remember the greatest gift that you've ever given us. In Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
Christ was born. God is so good. Good morning. Can you, can you remove the reverb? Yeah, the reverb. Huh? Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, if this is your first time, make sure you bend this thing down in order to get the bread out. Amen? In order to get the bread out. But I want you to think about this as we take communion this morning. Uh, think about the fact that, notice, God, and that's going to be what I'm going to share a little bit today. God became a man. Yes. The word became flesh. And so the bread, Jesus said, this is my body. Right? Yes. Given for you. This is my body. God became a man. Incarnate, became flesh. Amen. And so he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Amen. This is my body broken for you and my blood that has been given yes. for you to pay you. For our sins. Yes. Amen. See, a lot of times when people take communion, they take communion with a thought, you know, oh, I gotta, I gotta fess up, I gotta do you don't understand. Your sin, this proves your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. That's why you take communion. Because your sins have been taken care of. Yes. Amen. Amen. He paid for your sins. Amen. And so, and so I want you to say this, Father God. Father God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That the word became flesh. That the word became flesh. The Son of God, Son of God came, down earth came down to earth for me, for me. Took, on a form took on a form of a body, of a body. just like any other human, just like any other human. As, a baby. as a baby. But he grew up, he grew up to, die for me, to die for me, to offer his body, offer his body as a living sacrifice for me. Sacrifice. Thank you that Jesus was wounded, Thank that, you that, Jesus that he was broken, that he was, broken, that he was crushed. That he was crushed. And by his stripes, and by his stripes. I, am healed, I am healed, and I am whole. And I am whole. So thank you that I'm free so from all sickness and disease. And disease. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Go ahead, partake. Amen. He took the cup, and then I want you to say this, Father God. Father God. Thank you so much, not only for the body of Christ, but for his precious blood. That was the ultimate payment. My life was redeemed, not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. That is the most precious thing on the earth. His blood was shed for me so that I could be forgiven from all my sins. Thank you that I'm righteous and that I'm holy. Not because of anything I've done, but because of my faith in Jesus Christ and His precious blood. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. 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 You agree with that? Listen, there's a, there's a, a basket coming next to you. You can pass that to your left. And they will get that. But listen, while we do this, why don't you greet one another before you're seated? Why don't you guys begin to greet one another, love each other in the Lord? And, and uh, before you're seated, have a seat and just greet one another. Amen? Introduce yourself to your neighbor.
Thank you, dear. Jesus. Well, good morning, church. Merry Christmas to all of you. Amen. For those of you that are visiting, I'm Pastor Lucy, my husband that was singing, doing on the keyboard. That's Pastor Emmanuel. And on behalf of Grace Church, we're delighted that you're here visiting us. Thank you. It's such an honor for us to have you here joining us this morning. We appreciate it. If you're visiting family and friends, we're thankful that you joined us this morning. Amen. Thank you. Um, well, before I do the announcements, um, we do have a prayer cloth for Lynn Gutierrez. She had a stroke. Uh, what we do is we normally pray over these prayer cloths, and we have heard so many um, wonderful testimonies of people because in the book of Acts, it says in Acts 19 that they laid handkerchiefs, that the Apostle Paul and the, uh, the disciples, they laid hands on the cloth. And when they were transferred to the people, healing came forth. And so we believe in divine healing. We believe that by the stripes of Jesus, we're healed and whole. And so we're going to stand in the gap for this Lynn Gutierrez that had a stroke. And so if you don't mind stretching forth your hands this way. Father, we thank you so much for the finished work of Christ. We thank you that when Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago, Lord, we thank you that every stripe represented a sickness and a disease here on this earth. And Lord, one of those sicknesses was a stroke. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray over Lynn's body and we command all her ligaments, all her joints, all her nervous system, Lord God, to line up to the word of God that by the stripes of Jesus, she is healed and made whole. I think memory will come back. Uh, Father, if it was affected in any way in her body, Father God, that her normal functions will come back to being father and we thank you for it lord god that she will be healthy and whole again and if you agree with that say amen amen, amen. amen. we believe in the healing power of god you guys <laughs> just heard the testimony last uh, week when we had asher he was he, you know the testimony of asher how when he went uh to new jersey and they were going to do that surgery and because of prayer uh, they didn't have to land up opening him up. The doctor was able to adjust him without having to do that. And Asher's just a miracle in itself. If you've never heard of an actual miracle, just go to Pastor's YouTube page. Uh, Ramona will put it up there on the screen. Um, and you can see the, the testimonies are there of Asher. And also when Brian was here, he works in the area of miracles. And that leads me to, um, on your calendar, You'll see that on January the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, Brian is going to be coming back here to be with us, but he's going to be doing that teaching that he started here with us. He's going to be starting it. Uh, he started it here on the Sundays and that Monday that he was here, but he's going to finish it Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. And so if your schedule is available for that, it's going to be amazing because we're going to get to hear the full message and then he's going to attach this to his website or his, uh, you know, his uh, maybe Facebook page, whatever. And so it can be open to the public. But he's using our facility to be able to do it. So what, just, uh, what an honor. Amen? Amen. And then Tuesday night, this is in January. This is our January schedule. Of course, we'll be having, we will be having service next week. Next Sunday, there'll be youth and prayer on Tuesday, young adults, and, uh, and then of course, Miss Patty's group starts on that Thursday. Andrew Womack will be here in town that Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's a lot going on in January, so just please make sure you see your calendar. And then also the ones, the youth that were doing the Heal Our Land, they'll be doing the performance next Sunday as well, okay? So that's gonna be awesome, we're thankful for that. But also, I just wanted to address those that are watching online, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas, 
And you know, for those that are by themselves, whether it's here in the congregation or, you know, or those that are watching, you know, we just want to let you know that Jesus loves you, he cares for you, and you're not alone because you have the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to help us in time of need. I know some for some people the holidays are very difficult because they either have lost loved ones or they're by themselves. But I want to give you the comfort and the joy to know that Jesus loves you, he cares for you, and he'll send somebody your way to bring joy to your life today. So we, on behalf of Grace Church, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor? Thank you, honey. Uh -huh. Is this your glasses? No, those are Miss oh. Patty's. <laughs> Pretty and pink. All right. Amen. We do. We, we're so grateful to have you guys. And it's so important to know that your family, if you, and if uh, you know, if you feel you're by yourself, or you're not, you're not alone. Uh, I, I remember Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross, or before he told the disciples, "You're going to leave me alone, but I'm not alone because the Father is with me. Amen. Daddy God is with us all the time." Amen. Listen, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering. If you need an envelope for your giving, we're going to take care of that, and and then uh, we're going to have a special. Sister Patty's going to come up and sing a special. So if you need an envelope for your giving. Just raise your hands. I don't know if you, do we have the new total at all or no? Let's give you the new total for our youth office wing that we're building. Uh, we've raised so far 172,802.16, praise God, for the, for the youth building, praise God. And, and this is a total that we've raised since 20, uh, 2018 to finish our children's wing and our youth office wing on this side. So paid in full, the children's wing was paid in full. And the rest out of that that's left, we're, we're going to build the youth office wing. And um, praise God, we're believing it's going to be paid in full too. And, and no debt, amen? The only thing we only still owe is the bond issue that, that uh, we got when we originally built this. This was an empty two acres here that you see. I remember when we came out. In fact, we were standing right here in the dirt and uh, anointed it and believed God for many miracles were going to happen here and stuff right at this place right here. And so, look what the Lord has done since 20, 2015. He's been faithful. He has. He's been really faithful, really, really faithful. So, thank you so much for your faithful giving. And, you know, I shouldn't even have to say encourage people to give. God so loved the world that he gave. gave right? And that's why we, that's our motivation for giving. And so, if you're ready to give this morning, let's do it. Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for the opportunity to give and sow into your kingdom. Oh, you gave us the greatest, the greatest gift of all. And so we're so thankful that, that your love is in us and your son is in us. And therefore, we love to give too. And thank you, Father, for taking care of every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. And you're going to take care of us, Father, but we want to sow into your kingdom. We want to be a blessing. And we thank you for multiplying the seed that we're sowing so that we can further be a blessing to people and to your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As they do that, I'm going to have Sister Patty come on up. She's going to sing you a special. I don't know if you need to get the reverb back on for her. Let's see. Christmas. It's that time of the year that we sing a song around here, and it's called Come On, Ring Those Bells. And, uh, I want to share with you that uh, I'm not just going to sing the song today, but I'm expecting you to join in, okay? So um, when I go like this, I want you to join in singing with me, okay? All right. Thank you, Ramona. <clears throat> to take a holiday Everybody likes to take a rest Spending time together with the family Sharing lots of love and happiness Come on, ring those bells Like the Christmas tree Jesus is the King Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem. 
Let me turn this off. That's a Grace Church tradition. We have to have it every. <laughs> it's not. It's not Christmas with us, and the sister Patty sings that. Yeah. Sings that song, right? <laughs> Amen. It's not Christmas unless she sings it. Hey, listen. I got a short message for you, if, if you can believe that. Uh, I got some land for you. No, just kidding. But I, gotta, I have a short, I do, I have a short message, but listen, I just got a, a things, and then we're going to show a, a video that I want to show, and um, afterwards we have, a, as you see over there, we have a, a little Christmas uh, goodie bag that I, that I like to do. When I was a kid there in El Mirage, uh, they used to have a, you know, a fire, a Santa and a fire truck, and he would always bring bags of, uh, and, and back, back then it was just a brown bag with, with nuts oranges, lemons, stuff like that, hard candy, and we loved it, man, we loved it, you know, back then we had no peanut issues, or, you know, stuff like that, anyway, <laughs> all the preservatives today, so we would love that, so as a kid, we look forward to getting our bag with the nuts and, the, and stuff like that, so I'm used to that tradition, and that's why, um, um, that's why I, I love to do that, and that's what we do, in fact, I told Richard, give me a count of how many people are here. We might, just might have enough for you, even for you adults. Um, but, but let me show you what's in this bag here. Remember, anybody remember Latmo? Latmo bag? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. There you go, look at that. Ding dong, glory to God. He, he would always open it up. Uh, snap cheese it. All right, all right, what else is in here? Welch's, fruit snacks. Oh, see, it's all goodies. Airheads. Beef jerky, Three Musketeers, Oreo cookie, another airhead, this one got double airhead, a lollipop, blow pop, uh, mints, so it's got a, and then Nature Valley oak, you know, we have to give you a couple of things, you know, we have to make it a little bit of natural, so anyway, these are just nice fun snacks, again, I would actually, uh, I'm, this one here, for some reason, actually, there most of them have nuts. So I, I, I separated the ones that are non for non peanuts. So there, this one must be one of the non uh, the, the ones that doesn't have nuts. And but so you're either going to get a roasted nuts or honey roasted nuts because I'm like I miss the nuts in the bags. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm used to. That's what I like. And, amen. But anyway, let me just take a moment to share a few things I want to share. I want to talk to you about a great truth that we Christians believe and is a great reason to celebrate Christmas. And that's the simple truth, that God became a man. Some might say, what about the fact that God became a man? Why is it important? It's very important because, number one, God became a man for us. He didn't have to become a man, but he became a man for us. 
Amen. Jesus' birthday is a great reminder that God came down to earth to become a man in order to save us. Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, the familiar uh, Christmas story, uh, you see now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Because you can imagine Joseph, he was young too, and you can find out that Mary's pregnant, and he, you know, he was, he's, he's already had asked for her hand in marriage. She, he's probably thinking, oh man, I'm going to have to put her, he didn't want to shame her, so he just wanted to put her away secretly. But thank God, you know, the Lord showed her through an angel, showed her that, no, 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 this is of God. Can you believe Mary telling Joseph, um, I'm pregnant? <laughs> and it's by God. <laughs> Hello? Come on. You can imagine Joseph was like, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. So, so God had to go, next verse, God had to appear to him and show him, no, this is of God. And you will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus in Hebrew means Savior, salvation. Amen? And, and so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. That's why I love my name. <laughs> which is translated God with us. Amen? So my name is short for Emmanuel, but it's Manuel. Um, it, it's, it's with us. With, with, Manuel's just with us, but then Emmanuel, God with us. Just kidding. <laughs> He's with us, but when you put Emmanuel, God with us. Anyway, then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called, what? Him, Jesus. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? So Jesus, what is the Emmanuel? You know, people wonder, some cults wonder, is Jesus God? Well, we, let the Bible translate its own self. Emmanuel means what? God with us. Of course he's God. God became a man. In fact, that was one of the, one of the greatest revelations that when I was first born again, back in 1982, was that revelation that God himself, the second person of the Godhead, had become a man had come down to earth, the God who created me, the God who made the, the stars, thousands of stars in the ends of the earth, everything you've seen creation, the huge oceans, that same God, that same God uh, became a man. The only way I could relate to this was when I was a kid, I would take those plastic models after, you know, you get your models and whatever, and I'd put a fire on them, and I'd find these ant piles, and I'd pew, and I was, I was like playing God, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you would have these ant piles and everything. And, and, and let's say, let's say there's a little ant that says, Hey, the, the manual God is going to get us with his, with his plastic fire. Go back in the hole. Get in the hole. Right? Can you imagine? How, how could I? They, the, only way, the only way I could communicate is by becoming an ant. To do my beep, 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 beep. go in the hole, go in the hole. There's a, 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 a giant named Manuel. He's going to fire you up. Anyway, see what I'm saying? So in the same way, God had to come in our way. He had to become like us to communicate to us God's purpose and will for our lives. Amen? Look at 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. What is it? God was manifested in the flesh. God was what? manifested in the flesh. Look at 1 John, verses 1 and 2. 1 John, verses 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning what? The word of life. The life was what? That life was what? Manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was the, with the Father, and was, there it is again, manifested to us. So God became a man, but you might say, but why, Pastor? Why did he do it? Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. 
He who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was what? There it is again. God became a man, manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might what? Live through Him. Amen? Uh, that we might what? Live through Him. So again, God is love. He loved us, and so in order to save us, otherwise we would die and go to hell without Him, He had to send His Son. He, God Himself had to become a man. The second person of the Godhead had to become a man in order to save us. Why? Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we would have to then pay for our sins. But God knew it. Everyone would die and go to hell if, if I don't come. So God himself, the second person of the God, had to become a man, and he lived the righteous and holy life that we were called to live for us. In our place, he fulfilled the Old Testament law, and then what? And then he... he he, he, he is the, became the captain of our salvation. Why? Because he qualified to die in our place. Why? You might say, but pastor, why? Because he became a man. God could not do it if he was operating as God. God had to become a man in order to redeem man. Because when God put Adam and Eve on the earth, he gave authority to Adam and Eve to take authority over the earth. So only man could operate uh, you know, his authority in the earth. Therefore, God had to become a man to operate in that authority to die in our place yes. as our substitute, right? And, but you might say, here's, here's some of the things that he did. How did he do it or what was the purpose? Look at 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5, if you could put that for me. And you know that he was manifested to what? To take away what? Why did Jesus come? Take to take away our sins. That's the main purpose. That's why he became a man. And in him there is what? No sins. So look at, also look at uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Amen. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was what? There it is again. Manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. Amen. See, we were of the devil. We were children of, of the enemy. Amen? Children, yeah. Children of the corn tortilla. We were, we were b -b 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 bad to the bone. We were bad to the bone, right? So we were, we were, we were really bad people, man. We were bad to the bone. And, and, so, and so notice, Jesus came to what? To destroy, not only to take away our sins, but destroy the works of the devil. Amen? So that we could have life. Amen? But that's why it's so important, though, that's why, did you know, it's, believing God became a man is a crucial test whether what you hear, whatever message you hear from any man of God or woman of God, if it doesn't pass this test, then you know that it's not of God. Look at what 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. 1 John chapter 4. It's got to pass this test right here. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has what? Notice. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. See, how, do you see the importance? Because if... if he, because, see, listen, if, if, if religions teach that, oh, yeah. And it, see, there's so many false religions, false teachings out there. Oh, just believe your own God, whatever you want to believe. You can just believe whatever you want. You know, it's, it, 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 you're a God to yourself. That's what this new world age teaching is coming out. And listen, parents, our kids are being taught this at school. They are being taught this. This is the, the, what's being taught so that they can believe you can be your own God and so forth. No, 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 no. Listen, kids. Listen, children. God himself, there's only one God. He came and became a man. His name is Jesus Christ. He came to die for our sins. Amen? And he came in the flesh. Next verse. Go ahead and put the next verse. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist. That's, and that's what we see today. There's the spirit of Antichrist is permeating our school system and other areas in life. Why? It's against Christ. It's against believing that Jesus came in the flesh. Amen? And, and which you have heard was coming and now is already in what? The world. It's already in the world, even back then. But now it's more per pervasive. So this Christmas, we need to remind ourselves and our family and friends to be thankful of the great truth that God himself came down to earth became a man just like us 
in order to save us from our sins and that we might live through him. I remember, you know, I got saved in 1982. I was married for four years with my first wife, and she left me. I don't know why, just kidding. Anyway, but I uh, <laughs> went through a divorce. Now I'm remarried with Pastor Lucy for now over 30 years. So God is a God of second chances. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I feel bad for people that first married first because sometimes you learn how to get along in your first, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you find out, amen? I remember I used to read 1 Corinthians 13 about walking in love, and I, as a young Christian, oh, I'm easy, it's easy to walk in love. Love is patient, love is kind, love keeps no record of any wrongs, amen? I would look in the mirror, oh, I could walk in love with, I was single, I could walk in love with myself. It's easy to walk in love with yourself. But then I got married. And now I had to, what, answer to a higher authority. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? But now I had to, what, now I have to be, I have to be patient. She's still getting ready. Or I have to, you know what I'm saying? I have to do this. I have to, come on. Come on now. Amen. You know what I'm saying? But I remember that first Christmas after my wife had left. And, um, and uh, uh you know, I was going through a pity party, you know, my first Christmas, I'm, I'm by myself, you know, my, my ex-wife left, and, you know, I, and I'm there with my family, you know, we're having a good time and whatever, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like Elvis Presley, I'll be so blue Christmas without, and I, they probably sang that song, you know, here I'm, I'm hearing those songs, you know, I'll have a blue Christmas, you know. <laughs> and then my brother, my brother, he's really good at doing it, he does the porky, porky pig style, I'll have a blue, 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 blue Christmas. He does that, so that's kind of funny. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> my brother does that, Joey. He's a, he's a comedian. So anyway, so I, and I'm standing, I remember standing there in the old house there in First Avenue. My mom and dad, of course, the family's there. We've been playing songs. And I'm starting, I'm having a little pity party, feeling sorry for myself. And, and, and then all of a sudden, like God was speaking to my heart. Son. Why are you sad? I gave you the greatest gift I could ever give you. I gave you my, isn't, isn't my son Jesus enough? I gave you my son. I gave you my son. I gave you my son, and then all of a sudden, I got happy. And I said, yes, yes, thank you, Father. Thank you so much. You gave me the greatest gift that I could ever receive when you gave me Jesus, amen? When you gave me Jesus, you gave me the greatest gift. In fact, can you, go, can you put John chapter 1? He gave me the greatest gift, and that's why you, when you read the Gospel of John, chapter 1, uh, I think it was starting with verse 14. Notice, the Word became flesh. Amen. God became a man. The Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. Amen. And, and, and notice verse, uh, 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 go to the next verse, uh, I think 16. Oh, yeah. Well, back it up. I'm sorry. Back it up. Yeah, 15. You're right. You're right. John bore witness of him, cried out, This is he whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his what? Fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Did, did I put it in the Amplified there? Do you have it in the Amplified? Check this out. This is what's amazing. God was giving me the revelation. Son, I gave you, I mean, I gave you Jesus. That's the greatest gift. You, in other words, you got the greatest present you could ever get for Christmas. Jesus is your greatest gift. You hit the lottery, son. Look at what Amplify says. The word Christ became flesh, a human incarnate tabernacle. See, he, put, he pitched his tent, fixed his tent of flesh a while here among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as only begotten Son receives from his Father. Go ahead and go to verse 16 for me in the Amplify. For out of his fullness or abundance we have received, listen, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and favor upon favor, listen, and gift heaped upon gift. Are you seeing? When you got Jesus, you get it all. You got the best gift. I don't, you know, you can take, the devil can take everything away from my life, but one thing he cannot take, and he's not going to take those other things too, amen, because I'm believing God, 
but in the main name of Jesus, he could take it all, but he can't take Jesus Christ. He lives inside of me. If you're a believer, he lives inside in you, and you got the greatest gift. And, if, and, and so what if you die early or something happens? Get what? You go to be with Jesus, glory to God. You're going to see your loved ones in the Lord. I'm going to see my mama. I'm going to see my daddy. I'm going to see, you know, all my, my cousin who was killed in Vietnam. I'm going to see, come on now. So we got reason to be happy this Christmas season. Amen? Who knows? This might be our last Christmas together. The way the world is going, it, you know me, I believe Jesus is coming soon. And the way the world is going, this could be our very last Christmas together. We'll be together, but up in heaven. In our mansions of glory. Before the rapture comes, before the tribulation. Now, for those who aren't saved, if this is our last Christmas together... Danger, danger, danger. You better give your life to Jesus because time is running out. There's judgment coming for those who reject God's love and grace, His only precious Son. See, Pastor, but why will God bless me so much by just accepting His Son? Why do I get all the blessings because of that? Well, think about you as a parent. When somebody is really good to your child, when somebody values your child, says good things about your child, what do you, how do you react as a parent? Oh, yeah, you're my friend. Oh, yeah, you, you're good to my child. You, you, you bless my child. You're my, we're good. We're tight. Well, guess what? God values his son. He loves his son dearly, just like you love your kids dearly. And anyone who respects his son, accepts his son, God says, you're good with me. You're acceptable to me. I receive you. If you receive my son, you're receiving me. Just like a parent, you receive my son, you're receiving me. Come on now. Okay, I better stop it. I wasn't planning on preaching. <laughs> we're almost done. I told you we're going to keep it an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So, uh, so are you seeing how, how uh, so that, that's, that Christmas morning, I mean, that, I think it was 1987, that became a greater revelation to me that the greatest gift I have is Jesus. I don't have to have anything to be happy. Amen. And then the older you get, you understand that. You just want your kids to be blessed, your grandkids or whatever. But you as a parent, man, I'm just thankful I have Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would I? Th I want you to think, where would you be if, if Jesus was not in your life all these years? I know some of you, you'd be in jail. Amen. Amen. You'd be in jail. Amen. Uh, singing uh, John Wayne songs or something. You know, <laughs> I hear the train are coming. It's coming around the bend. I ain't seen no sunshines and don't know when. Johnny Cash. What did I say, John Wayne? Uh. Well, I'll tell you, sister. I sing too, sister. Anyway, but uh, so anyway, listen. Let that revelation, God Himself. See, God could have sent somebody else, but God himself chose to come himself. That's what blows me away. The second person of the God who made the heavens and the earth came down himself for me. He was born to die on that cross. So before we move on, if you're watching me or if you're here, you've never received the greatest. Make this the best Christmas ever by making Jesus, by receiving the greatest gift ever. So if that's you, if you're watching me, or if you're here, I want, I want to pray for you. And I want everybody to pray together with us. Uh, I'm not going to call you out, but if that's you, look, it's so simple. Right there where you're sitting, you can receive the greatest gift of Jesus as your Savior. So if that's you, or if you're watching me, I want you to say this, to, let's say this together. Heavenly Father, I come to you I admit that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I've heard the good news that Jesus was born. He became a man. I believe in the virgin birth. And then that he died for my sins. That he was buried. But then he rose again as proof that my sins were paid for. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you now as the greatest gift I could ever receive. Take over my life. 
I'm yours. I'm yours. You're, mine. You're mine. Make me a new creation. Me a new creation. And from this, from this day forward, I will live for you, live for you. By, your grace, by your grace, through faith, through faith. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please let us know. If, if you're watching, please let us know if you receive Jesus or here too. Amen. Please let us know if you have received Jesus. Amen. At this time, if you want to start getting the video, uh, Ramona, you want to start getting the video ready? We're going to show you a video, and then I'm going to ask the praise team to start getting ready and come on up. And then after that, uh, I'm going to probably need some ushers to get a help to get the bags out here. Well, listen, everybody gets a goodie bag in this place. All right. Amen. Everybody's going to get a... Aren't you glad you came? You're going to get your own little goodie bag. Glory to God. You're either going to get a ding-dong or a Twinkie. Ding-dong or a Twinkie. Amen. You want to get that ready? I want, I want you to watch... Listen, kids. Kids, here's what I preach, but the way you would understand it. Amen. So that's, you can get the lights down and, and the volume up once you, get it, once you get it ready. I want you to watch this. better than my message, huh? <laughs> that's becoming a tradition, too. We show that every Christmas, because I love that. I love it. I think that's the best. Okay. 
Can you go ahead and put on uh, this one? All right, let's stand up. We're going to sing one more song, and then we're going we're gonna to pass out the goodies. We have a special guest today, Jose Feliciano. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero with babies, chill, and all the babies, all the nursery babies, and the children, come on up and get your bags first. Amen. We have some bags for those that, uh, for, for those that with peanut allergies, we have some, so if you need to get one, they're right here. Yeah. Those are all regular. Those are all regular. So, right there, honey. Let's go ahead and, and, and go ahead and you can get your bag. Yeah. And then I want to get the children to start coming up. Come on up, children. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can give it to them. Amen. All right, what we're going to do is, youth, any youth in the house? Youth, come on, youth, come get your bags. Come on, youth. Yeah. 
As soon as the youth are done, everybody else, come on up and get a back. Amen. You guys have a Merry Christmas. We love you guys. From Grace Church and the staff, have a blessed, blessed day. We love you guys. Make sure you get your bag before you leave. <laughs>